Hey guys, it's Frank from PBH, and this is the first video in the series where we're converting an 8.8 .8 differential over to a full floater with cambered ends for our Pro Touring Fox body. So in this first video, what we're gonna be showing you is basically the entire kit from Strange and the components that we're gonna be using, how they're able to give us camber and toe adjustability on a solid axle differential. And then we're gonna show you the tear down of this differential because it's a little bit, well, it's quite comical and it was stressful because we definitely shouldn't have run into the problems that we did run into and what we had to do to overcome them. I basically threw everything in the book at this diff to get it apart and we finally, finally were successful. All right, so what you see in front of you here on the table and with a mix of my hand gestures as I'm voicing this over is the complete axle end assembly. Now this is what we got from Strange, this is their Pro Touring Differential Full Floater Conversion Kit. And what I'm gonna be showing you here are all the components that we're gonna be using, short of maybe the axles and the brakes. What I'm showing you here is the actual axle end. Now this guy here is gonna be welded inside of the factory axle tube. It gets a plug weld on basically the 12 and six position, and then it gets seam welded all the way around. We'll have to machine that down to size. Then I'm showing you the toe plate and now the cambered snout. Now this cambered snout is what the bearing's gonna ride upon and that's what the lock nut's gonna on, that's why it's threaded there on the end. We've got a hub assembly, a drive plate, axle retaining nut, and cap. And the way this all goes together is in sequence. First we're gonna put our toe plate on there, then we're gonna go ahead and put our cambered snout. I'm not bolting them together, I'm just putting them in place. You're gonna have an inner bearing. You're then gonna put your hub on there. Once you get your hub on there, you'll be able to go ahead and apply the outer bearing. So it's very similar to like a truck front end uh, or, or basically an older five lug uh, conversion or even four lug from a Fox body. And now you got this nice free spinning hub on your axle end and it's on the cambered snout. So it has one and a half degrees of camber in this case. Then you got the drive plate. Drive plate naturally is exactly as it's described as being driven by the axles. That's what's spinning the entire assembly. And that gets bolted to the hub assembly and that's where your studs are coming out also. Once you have that in place, then you have the axle retaining bolt and that axle retaining bolt basically just holds the axle in place and then you have the cap to seal everything off. Once it's all done, you got yourself a nice complete assembly and you can kind of imagine what's going on here. There is very, very, very little resistance to the rolling of the car. So rolling resistance is greatly re uh, reduced. And then you're also gonna have the ability to have toe adjustability and camber adjustability as well. So transferring power energy to the ground is gonna be that much easier to do. I'll have the ability to basically do a rear end alignment. Now it's not gonna be as easy as just putting the stuff on. We're gonna have to do some magical work with the axle tubes and make sure they're straight to begin with. But once this is all in place, it's going to be lights out, man. I'm really looking forward to see how this reacts on the car. I've owned this car for a long time. It's always been solid axle. So there's going to be a difference. Whether it's negative or good, we're going to know right off the hit. All right, so what you see on the screen is our donor differential. It's an 8.8 out of an 01 GT. I zeroed in on the 01 to 04 differentials because they are a little bit wider. And it's going to help me set this strange Pro Touring full floater setup on the differential and try to keep the width of the axles, the track width, the same. Right now, my 8.8 .8 differential has been widened to the 01 to 04 specs with 9-inch axle ends. We're going to try to duplicate that. If we fall short of that, which I think we might, we always make up the difference with a little wheel spacer. All right, so here we go into the teardown of this 8.8 .8 differential. I'm gonna warn you, I am not a skilled mechanic. I am not a qualified professional technician, so you're gonna see me go through the motions like most of us do, trying to figure out where to put your hands and tools and stuff like that to get the job done. So I apologize in advance. Now, what you see me doing here is just using a small impact gun, trying to get the bolts off the diff cover. 
and it's fighting me the whole time. This is the first thing I'm doing, and it's already fighting us. And you're going to see later on this video, the fight definitely gets more intense. I go ahead and get them loose, get them off, and I promptly just shoot the diff cover off the differential, onto the table, onto the floor. I get fluid all over the place. Luckily, it wasn't full. It had already been opened up and drained and inspected, and you'll see now why we know that. A lot of the hardware seemingly was already been loosened up. All right, so here we go getting into removing the pin, the bolt that retains the pin that basically locks your axles into place, these new these factory C-clip axles. Usually this guy, you got to put some heat on it to get it loose. Mine seemingly was already loose, so went ahead and took it out, moved the pin around, got it out of the, out of the way, and that allowed us to basically pull the axles, or actually push them inboard so we can get the C-clips loose. Forgive me, the camera was a little bit out of focus here, but we were able to use a magnet that would allow us to attach to those C-clips and pull them out. That didn't work, so we just used that same magnet to push them out. And we finally get them out of the way and we're able to remove the axles in their entirety. So here we are removing the main caps. Now the main caps are holding in the carrier bearings. The carrier bearings are attached to the center section. The center section has a ring gear bolted to it. So once we remove these ring, uh, these main caps, we can actually remove the entire center section out of the differential and inspect it. We're not going to be reusing it, but it gives us a good indication of what the life of this differential was, which supposedly was all stock, never was raised, all that fun stuff. Once we get the main cap bolts loose, we can go ahead and remove the center section. Now it's important to note, when you remove the main caps, make sure they go right back into the same position. Don't switch them side to side or flip them upside down. It's gonna help you line things up down the road and make sure that you don't have any mix smashes between the differential housing and the main caps. You wanna keep them in the same orientation they were born in. Now once we get these back into position, Go ahead and show you what the pause unit looks like and what the ring gear looked like and everything checks out. I mean, this is probably rebuildable and able to go into the next car, but we're not going to be using the factory pause unit. We're going to be putting that Torsen T2R in there with a set of 410 gears. Now we move on to the brake hardware and what we're going to be removing here now are the Moan braces. I use Willwood brakes with this new strange Pro Touring full floater differential. So it doesn't need these Moan braces. It doesn't need the brackets that are bolted to the end of the axle housing. So all that rusty hardware and tools are going to be put into, into play to remove them, get them out of the way, get all that weight off of there because literally what they're bolted to is not going to exist by the time we get to the second video in the series. You can see the rusty hardware gets stuck in every single socket. You got to bang them on the table to get them out of there. All right, guys. So now we get to the pinion gear. This pinion gear threw us for a major loop because it did not want to come out. Now, the easy part is removing the nut and probably pulling the flange off. We didn't pull the flange off right away because we wanted to get that pinion gear to move. And since it didn't want to move with just a couple light hammer taps, well, as you can see, Mike, our technician, is coming out with a sledgehammer. And by the face of everybody in this video, you can probably tell how unorthodox this is and how loud it was and how ineffective it was. And it wasn't because Mike isn't strong enough. It's because that pinion gear was definitely seized on the bearing. Now, by now, it should have moved. It should have came out, but it didn't. So we're using everything in our arsenal before we get to stuff like our air hammer and our press to try to get this thing out because if you go to do this installation just a regular gear installation in the car this is all you usually have to do to get that old one out of the way so it didn't work and we went ahead and removed the differential from the table and put it on the ground thinking we can get more leverage on it we could put a socket on it that kind of stuff and really put some weight on it it didn't work it was just a, an exercise in futility here we see Mike putting on the puller 
for the flange. We're going to get it out of the way and make sure it doesn't get lost or damaged during this process. So while we had it still on the ground, we put a nice impact socket on there and tried again with the sledgehammer and it did nothing, didn't budge a millimeter. We went ahead and put it back on the table and used the next conventional thing, which is an air hammer. Now the air hammer should really knock this thing loose. You shouldn't have to use it, but why the hell not? Let's just give it a shot. This should take care of it, right? It didn't do anything. The next step was to put it in a 20 ton press. And when we put it in the 20 ton press, you guessed it, it didn't do shit. It continued to fight us. So we added some heat, we got our little propane torch out, give it a little bit of heat with 20 tons of pressure on there, or maybe 20 tons of pressure on there, whatever, it should have budged and it didn't. It just sat there and took it. The next step was to get the acetylene tanks out and use that as a torch to give it some more heat under pressure from the press and it did nothing, absolutely nothing. So the next step was basically to go ahead and torch the bearing and get it the hell out of there. But as you can see, we didn't give up on giving it heat and pressure. Now I got Jake's help here. Jake went ahead and set up the tanks, put the cutting torch on and got into that bearing and gave it hell. He cut it on two sides and with a hammer was able to finally get the pinion gear to budge and move. The next step was to go ahead and cut the nut off because we had used that nut kind of as an impact point for the sledgehammer and the air hammer and the press and it was completely deformed so we had to cut that off so we can get it to fall completely out. Once we get it to move we went ahead and hopped into using the torch to cut the nut off because it had been completely deformed during all the other trials of removing this sucker and we had to cut that bad boy out too. Once we get the nut cut, voila, a couple hits from the hammer, and we got a pinion gear sitting on the floor. A quick inspection of what was left of the bearing reveals that uh, it did have some oxidation inside where it makes contact with the pinion gear. So they were probably just basically wedged together or fused together with that oxidation. Really not something we usually see because I've never seen our guys have to take a torch to do a set of rear gears on an 8.8. .8. It was the first, and uh, it was a first for a lot of the guys, so it was interesting to see what we had to do to get it out of there. While we have the torch out, we went ahead and removed the quad shock brackets. That's what you see now in the video being removed because they're not going to be used with my torque arm, and honestly, where they're sitting is probably going to be an area you're going to be working and welding anyway, so they got to go. So if you're planning on doing a modification like this, those quad shocks usually aren't going to be used if you have high-performance suspension like a lower control arm. Those quad chucks usually aren't too effective anyway, and they can just be removed from the assembly. Once we get the driver side bracket done, we just duplicate it on the passenger side and this differential is now ready for stage two of this build. That stage is going to be cutting the axle ends off, then measuring our housing to see what we have, and then measuring the inside diameter of the tube. Now that inside diameter of the tube is going to be vital to the next step. The axle end that we showed you earlier in the video, it comes oversized, so that's going to have to take a trip to the machine shop where it's going to be cut down an extra thousandths from that measurement so it'll slide into the tube itself. Once it's inside that tube we're going to drill two half inch holes opposing each other on the housing and they'll get plug welded and then the housing end gets seam welded. But the first step is just cutting it and that's what we're going to do in part two of this video measuring it and showing you what else we have to do. We're going to prep the housing, we're going to grind off all the extra welding slag that's on the differential tubes and then we're going to weld the axle tubes to the carrier itself. That's a little trick we do to make sure they don't spin in place or bend but all that has to be done in a jig. Once that's done 
we got to make sure those axle tubes are straight and that's also going to be part of this build series as well as we show you what we do to go ahead and ensure this stuff the final video will end up being the assembly where we put the brakes on put the axles in there that kind of stuff we're going to show you everything we have to do to get this thing right down to installing it and getting it built once we have it in there i'm really looking forward to seeing what the results are because this is a modification i've always wanted to do to the point where i did consider putting an independent rear suspension in it but with all the modifications we already have like the torque arm the shocks what i'm used to in the car itself and how it drives there's a lot more value in that to me than changing it wholesale out back so we skipped on the irs and decided to do these axle ends since we have the ability to do it thank you for watching the video guys make sure you subscribe to the channel hit that notification bell leave a comment with any questions or anything you need to add to the project and like the video if you can you can find us on social media both on facebook and instagram and our website is pbhperformance.com we're available monday through friday on the phone 561-737-2331 and you can email us info at pbhperformance.com thanks for tuning in and make sure you keep up with what's going on at pbh as we release more project videos and more tech videos weekly Thanks for tuning in, guys. Thank you for the support. And make sure you join us every Wednesday for PBH Live, Wednesday night, 7 p.m. Eastern, right here on our YouTube channel.